Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I just want to give a couple more minutes just to give a little extra time for those that may be joining us a, a few minutes late. So we'll get started in a couple of minutes. Until then, um, if you just kind of want to hang out and we'll get started. Thanks so much. All right, while we wait for everybody to, or anybody else that might want to join us, we'll do some housekeeping tips and give you a little bit of information about what we're going to talk about today. Um, I will have a question and answer session at the end, so if you do think of any questions um, that I can answer for you, there is a chat box down in the bottom left-hand corner, and you can send that um, information to me via the chat box, and um, I will try and answer those at the end. So, and I know a lot of you have sent questions in on the form, and so I will try to cover most of those today as well. So if you did send a question, and I um, will try to answer that. If you had something specific um, to your tour or to your travel um, arrangements, then I will contact you probably after the call to discuss those with you. So, all right. Okay, well, we will go ahead and get started. So thank you all for joining us today. And we wanted to put this together before you left for Scandinavia uh, to try and answer some questions about what to pack, uh, what currency you need, where to meet your guide, etc. So first I'll go over just some general information, answer some questions submitted on the registration forms, and then like I said, at the end of the presentation, I'll open it up for any additional questions you might have. All right, so let's get started. So my name is Amanda Hancock, and I'm the manager of sales and marketing for Brecky Tours and Travel. If you have questions that I don't answer for you today, you can contact me at the office at the 800 number, or you can send me an email, and we'll be glad to help you out. So I also invite you to visit our website, as you'll find a variety of information about traveling to Scandinavia and beyond on our helpful hints. So. And while I may not answer all the questions today, I will try and answer as many as I can. And if I don't get to everybody, I will contact you afterward with those answers. So a few weeks before you depart on your trip, you can expect to receive a packet of information from our office. Now, you'll, you can expect one packet of information per couple. So if you're traveling husband and wife, that sort of thing, then you'll just receive one packet of information. In the package, you'll find the following, a departure letter with some basic information pertaining to your specific tour, a final tour itinerary, your final flight itinerary if you've booked your airfare with us, luggage tags, a tote bag, contact information for the hotels that you'll be staying at while on tour, airport information, and any additional information that might pertain to your particular tour. Now, some documents are definitely more important than others. So, for instance, please make sure to double check your passport and make sure that it's valid for at least three to six months after your return date. And you may want to make a copy or two of your passport. Be sure to pack your passport in, um, in your carry-on. And you'll also, if you want to take a copy, I would also pack that in your carry-on as well. Uh, a second copy, if you make one, would be left with a family member or a friend, which can be sent to the U.S. Embassy if your passport is lost or stolen while overseas. So please take a few moments and ensure that the name listed on your airline ticket matches your passport name, and this includes your first, middle, and last name. You may also want to keep your airline receipt to ensure that your miles are credited to your account. Now, the airlines are responsible for crediting your points to your uh, frequent flyer account, so if your balance is incorrect, you might want to contact the airlines directly for that. And finally, if you've booked independent, independent services with us, um, such as a pre- or post-tour, 
Please review your documents before departing the U.S. and let us know immediately if you notice any errors or if you just have any questions. Please note that the vouchers will have emergency contact numbers on them in case you need assistance while traveling. And finally, be sure to note any special instructions on your vouchers. Um, for instance, train vouchers must be exchanged for an actual ticket before boarding the train. So luggage allowance. On the land portion of your tour, we allow one suitcase, so one larger bag, and one carry-on bag per person. Luggage at handling at hotels is provided for one suitcase. And so your luggage will be delivered and picked up from your room at the beginning and end of your stay. We do provide two luggage tags per person. And so if you'd like to put these on your, your large suitcase and your carry-on, that would be great. And that helps the, um, the porters at the hotels deliver them to the right room. You may also want to put a label with your name, address, and phone number inside your suitcase in case your tag becomes separated. Most airlines do allow one free piece of check luggage on international flights. If you do have a domestic ticket booked in conjunction with your international flights, the airlines may charge a baggage fee. So you may want to check with the airlines before you depart to see if any fees will apply. Now typically your check luggage can weigh up to 50 pounds and the dimensions cannot exceed 62 inches. And so this is length plus width plus height. Now a standard roller bag is usually what we recommend. And for your carry-on, typically the weight cannot exceed 22 pounds and the dimensions cannot uh, exceed 45 inches. And so that's, again, length plus width plus height. So 62 and 50 for your check luggage, 45 and 22 for your carry-on. Now, luggage restrictions and fees do vary from airline to airline. So I have listed some... Um, contact information directly for each airline on this page. So if you would like to double check that before you depart, this would be the place to go. And of course, everybody's gonna get a copy of the recording after this, so you will have, uh, have this information. Now inside your suitcase, you may wanna pack the following. Uh, casual clothing is appropriate for all of our tours. For the nights that we have dinner included, you may want to bring some slacks or a nice shirt or blouse. As Scandinavians do like to dress up a bit for dinner, but it's completely optional. Clothing that can be layered is recommended as temperatures can change depending on your travel during the day. So for instance, if, you're, if you know that you're going to have a fjord cruise that day, um, the temperature on the water can usually be a little bit colder, so you might want to throw a sweater on over your t-shirt or something. Good walking shoes are a must as sightseeing along cobblestone streets and walking in the mountains of Norway is not really the place for hills and flip-flops. And a raincoat with a removable lining is a good choice, or you may want to choose to bring a rain poncho. A light coat or jacket may be necessary in the morning and during the evenings. You may also want to bring a swimsuit if you'd like to enjoy any of the pools or spas at the hotels. And finally, leave your valuables at home. If it's something that's going to create an emotional or financial hardship, it's best just to leave it behind. Now, in case your luggage is delayed, I would recommend packing some clothing in your carry-on bag. So maybe just one change of clothes. And then if you're traveling with someone, put some of your clothes in their suitcase and vice versa in case one bag is delayed. That way, at least you have a fresh, clean, you know, fresh set of clothes for a day or two until your bag catches up to you. Now, if you're planning to visit family or friends while in Scandinavia, you may want to bring a small gift, um, especially if they're extending their hospitality to you in some way. Appropriate gifts include an America flag or a windsock, books, calendars, uh, caps, t-shirts, and other items that are unique to your city or state, uh, college or professional uh, sports clothing or caps, Native American or country and western themed items, liquor or liqueurs, and um, for the children, um, Disney clothing, candies, puzzles, or cartoon characters are all good things to, to pack. So some other items that you may want to include um, might be an extra memory card or batteries for your camera, snacks and a refillable water bottle, a travel alarm clock, which most of the time, uh, most people use their, their cell phones nowadays. Washcloths, um, if you've never been outside of the U.S., washcloths are um, not something that you normally find in European hotel rooms. So if you're like me, you like washing your face at the end of the day, that's something that you may want to bring. 
tissues, um, a sewing kit or safety pins, medications, and this includes prescription and over-the-counter. Um, sometimes it's a little difficult to find aspirin or you know just something that you might need along the way, so it's better just to bring those. Uh, Band-aids and a first aid kit are also um, something nice to have. Your converter and adapters, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Sunscreen and sunglasses. Extra eyeglasses or a repair kit, or if you wear contacts, extra contacts and solution. Maps and travel information. You may want to bring a spot remover, such as a Tide stick or wipes. An inflatable pillow or an eye mask. Of course, you might want to bring an umbrella or a poncho if you're traveling around Scandinavia. A journal to record your favorite memories of the day. A small day pack for sweaters, cameras, snacks, and the like. So something maybe along, you know, kind of a small backpack. And then plastic baggies. Um, so in case uh, something is wet or you need to make sure that it's not going to um, come in contact with something else um, in your suitcase, this is a great uh, way to separate. Now we had a few people ask about the weather while they're in Scandinavia. So it's pretty similar to the northeastern United States, so it's rarely as hot in the summer or as cold in the winter. So average daytime temperatures in Fahrenheit for June, July, and August range from the 40s to the 60s, depending on your region of travel. It's always a good idea to check the weather before you depart the U.S. That way you can, you know, if it looks like it's going to be cold one day, maybe you can throw in an extra sweater or something um, that will be appropriate. Now, the world runs on two types of electricity. 110 and 125 volts are 220, 240 volts. Now, North American devices usually run on 110, 125, and the rest of the world runs on 220, 240. So if you're wondering what you, what you need to look for, on your device, um, there should be a spot on there where it tells you if a voltage converter or transformer is necessary. Now this label might be affixed directly to the back of your device, on the AC transformer box of the power supply lead, or molded into the plastic on the plug. And sometimes it's really hard to see, so you might have to do a little searching. So if you do find that your device is dual voltage, which means that it works on 110 or 220, then really all you need is an adapter. So basically you're just changing the plug. These typically sell for about three to five dollars. And then um, the, this is actually the one that you will need for Norway. It's a two, um, two rounded prong plug. And if you, if you find that your device is only um, works on 110 voltage, then you will need a converter. And this actually converts the electricity from 240 to the 110 um, and also includes, it usually includes the various plugs as well for different regions of the world. And these can, you can usually find these on, um, say, Amazon or um, Walmart, Best Buy, things like that, for maybe $20, $25. So currency. Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and Iceland each have their own currency known as the kroner. And in Finland, they use euro. The currencies of the five countries are not interchangeable, so if you are traveling between countries, you will need to exchange money um, when you arrive in your new country. Now, the easiest place to exchange your money is at the, your arrival airport. You can also exchange money at banks and some post offices, and your tour director can assist with locating an exchange desk or an ATM. Now, some of you had asked about exchanging money before you depart the U.S., and um, Euro is probably ready, readily available within banks, um, especially larger banks like Wells Fargo and things like that. Um, Norwegian kroner and Swedish kroner and Danish kroner might be, or if they don't have it, they might be able to order it. So it would be best to check with your bank to see, um, to see what they may have available. Now for credit cards, uh, you'll find that most major credit cards, including Visa, MasterCard, and in some larger stores, American Express, they're honored at most hotels, stores, banks, and restaurants. However, most credit card companies do charge foreign transaction fees made on purchases abroad. So um, most retailers in Europe also use the smart card system, so it, you will need to have your little chip in your card. 
So um, if you've requested one of these types of cards from your bank, please be sure to set up your four-digit PIN before you depart the U.S. And while we're talking about banks and credit cards and that sort of thing, I would definitely recommend contacting your credit card company and bank before you depart the U.S. You can let them know that um, you will be traveling outside the country so that they can anticipate charges being made outside of your hometown and won't suspend your um, card for what may appear to be suspicious charges. You might also want to make a photocopy of the front and back side of your cards to leave behind with someone in case um, the cards are misplaced, lost, or stolen. Now, ATMs are readily available in larger cities in Norway and Scandinavia. And we don't really recommend taking traveler's checks nowadays just because they are pretty um, hard to exchange once you get overseas. And just to kind of give you an idea of what the exchange rate is, I've set up this little table here. So if you have uh, something that's 800 um, kroner, you would divide that by eight and it would be $100. And same thing with Danish kroner, Swedish kroner, and Icelandic kroner. Uh, for euros, you would multiply the amount by 1.1 um, to kind of give you an idea of what the amount would be in U.S. dollars. And this OANDA website right here will give you the current exchange rates um, for all the currencies that you might come in contact with when traveling in Scandinavia. So if you are planning to travel to Minneapolis for your departing flight, you might be interested in a park and fly special that we have in conjunction with the Holiday Inn in Bloomington. Um, it's near the south entrance of the airport. So rates start at $119 for a king or two queen bedroom, and it includes 10 free days of parking. So if you're planning to maybe come in a day early and you want to leave your car, this would be a great option rather than having to pay for a parking spot at the airport. Shuttles are available to the airport and the Mall of America, and they do have a Green Mill restaurant and bar that's connected to the hotel. So once you get there, you can just kind of relax and uh, put your feet up and wait for, um, um, for your flight out the next day. Now, if um, all of our tours um, include flights on Iceland Air, so if you're traveling with the group, you may want to uh, pay attention for the next minute or so. Um, now, there are two terminals in the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport. There's Terminal 1, which is Lindbergh, and Terminal 2, which is Humphrey. Now, Iceland Air serves Terminal 2, Humphrey. So if you have a domestic flight arriving in a Terminal 1, you will need to take the free transportation between the two terminal buildings. And if you look on page 13 of our Helpful Hints booklet, there's a little bit more information about that. Now, all Iceland Air flights will route through the Keflavik Airport in Iceland. So you'll arrive in Iceland and then continue on um, via another flight. So you'll get off, you'll switch planes, and then you'll continue on. Now your luggage should be checked all the way through, so you won't have to collect your luggage, but you will need to show your passport in Iceland. So basically you'll get off the plane, you'll go through passport control, where you'll show your passport, you'll get a little stamp, and then you'll go to your next gate. Um, you. Because Iceland, um, the airport there, is so small, you really only need about 30 to 45 minutes to go from gate to eight, so it's a pretty easy um, change. Now, during your flight with Iceland Air, you can expect free in-flight entertainment. Uh, they do have headphones for sale, or you can bring your own. You will receive complimentary water, soft drinks, tea, and coffee. However, they do not offer um, meals um, complimentary on in their economy section. So if you're in economy comfort or business class, you will receive a meal. But you, if you're just in economy, they do have meals for purchase or you can bring something on board. Now snacks, um, in case you are interested, snacks range from about $2.50 to $5 for chips, um, sweets, trail mix, and pastries. And then meal items um, such as a snack box, sandwich, or salad are $8 and up. So just kind of give you an idea of what the pricing is. Now, for those of you that had requested a window or an aisle seat on your tour application, we did submit that request to the airlines and based on, you know, what seats we had available to book. However, we can't guarantee that the airlines will not change or move your seats after the request has been made. So if we're not able to assign the seats at the time of booking, you will be assigned a seat when checking into your flight. Exit row seating and bulkhead seating will not be able to be pre-assigned before check-in. 
they reserve uh, bulkhead seating for people with small children or people with disabilities. Um, if you're sitting, if you would like to sit in the emergency um, exit row, you must be able to operate the emergency door and they will determine that upon check-in. If you need wheelchair assistance or an electric cart for transfers at the connecting flights, um, we can request that, but you might want to re-verify that at the airports when you check in. So how to avoid jet lag while on the plane. So if your flight arrives in the morning, of course try to sleep on board, but if you're like me and you have trouble sleeping on the plane, you might want to try over-the-counter sleep aids such as Tylenol PM or Advil PM, something like that. You might also want to bring an eye mask, earplugs, and a blanket or a pillow if that will help you fall asleep. Bring a toothbrush and anything else which isn't a liquid or a gel that might help you freshen up once you get off the plane. Wear loose-fitting clothing and wear comfortable shoes and try not to take them off as your feet do occasionally swell during long flights. When possible, walk up and down the aisle to stretch your limbs and get the blood circulating. If, uh, if the flight offers an in-exercise video, you might want to um, take part in that. And these are designed to help with body circulation and reduce fatigue. You want to drink plenty of water on the plane and avoid alcohol, caffeine, and carbonated drinks. Avoid wearing contact lenses on the plane. And the air in the cabin tends to uh, dry them out. And of course, if you fall asleep, you're going to wake up with gum in your eyes. And if you tend to get air sick, drink a small bottle of ginger ale before boarding and pack a newspaper in your carry-on bag. The ginger ale will help calm your stomach and so will the smell of newspaper. And once you land, spend as much time as you can out in the sunlight, which will help your body reset its natural time clock to coincide with your new surroundings. Where to meet? So if, um, if you are flying on our group block, uh, airport transfers in Scandinavia are included for passengers arriving and departing on our designated flights. After deplaning and collecting your luggage, you'll proceed through passport control. You'll see two exits, green if you have nothing to declare and red if you have something to declare. So you'll choose the appropriate exit and then leave the customs area where you'll continue to the arrival hall and you'll meet your tour director who will probably be standing there with a brekkie tour sign of some sort. Now, if you're arriving on a different flight than the group, you're welcome to join our transfers, provided the arrival time is similar. <clears throat> Please be sure to just send us a note before um, to our office indicating your flight number and arrival time, and we can um, make that arrangement for you. If for some reason your flight is delayed, um, you would then be responsible for your own transportation to the hotel. And there's a list of um, different ways to transfer on page 12 of your Helpful Hints booklet. There's usually trains, uh, buses, and um, taxis from the hotel or from the airport to the um, to the hotel if you are not able to get on one of the transfers. Now, if you do need to meet your group uh, that night at the uh, hotel, you will meet for dinner. And the dinner time is listed in your departure letter. So if you look on your departure letter and it says that dinner is set for 6.30 at the Grand Hotel in Oslo, you'll know where to meet um, once you have arrived to your hotel. So again, uh, if you have any questions or need help with transfers and that sort of thing, um, information can be found on page 12 of our helpful hints, or you can um, send us an email or give us a call and we'll be sure and help you out with that. So the first thing you might notice once you get to your hotel room is that they're a little bit smaller than what we expect here in the U.S. And not all of them have air conditioning. Now all the hotels used in our itineraries do have private bathrooms with a shower or a tub, a toilet and a sink, um, but they can vary in size depending on, of course, where we are. Now if you get to your room and you think there's a fuse that's blown when the lights and the TV don't turn on, think again because many of the hotel rooms in Scandinavia use key cards, which you not only use to access your rooms, but it will turn on the electricity as well. There's typically a box um, near the entrance of your room where you can slip your key card in and control the consumption of energy. It's a great way to save power, but it's a little confusing sometimes for uh, some of our clients that are just traveling overseas for the first time. 
Now, some hotels in larger cities will have a guest laundry room or offer a cleaning service at an additional cost. And if you do want more information about these services, I would ask the front, um, front desk staff when you check in. Now, nearly all hotels across Scandinavia offer internet access in their lobbies at a computer station, and more and more hotels are offering wireless connections as well. Now, wireless may only be available in the lobby area, but most um, hotels have starting, started offering it throughout hotel and guest rooms. And before you set off on your own, say you have a little time to go sightseeing, grab a business card or a map from the front desk. And this way, in case you get lost, you can use the business card on, to ask for directions and, in order to get back to your hotel. Now, most of the time, you will find a hairdryer, um, a clothes or an irons press, uh, or, I'm sorry, an iron or a pants press, uh, along with shower gel and shampoo in your room. However, um, if you're missing a hairdryer or something like that, if you call down to the front desk, they'll usually bring those items right up to you. Now, most days on our tour, we'll start with a departure from the hotel between 7.30 and 9, depending on the day schedule. Your, your tour guide will usually let you know at the dinner the night before what time to expect to leave the next day. A breakfast buffet is served each morning at the hotel, so you should reserve some time for eating before departure. You can expect to arrive to your hotel each night around 6 p.m. and sometimes earlier. On travel days, you can expect several stops to allow for restroom breaks and sightseeing. Most, tour, um, most of our tours are leisurely, but you can expect to walk short distances each day and sometimes over uneven terrain such as cobblestones. You will need to be able to climb the steps in and out the bus. And since sometimes restrooms can be located in lower levels of buildings and sometimes there's no elevators, you might want to be aware of that issue. If assistance is needed, we do ask that you bring a qualified and physically able companion to assist you. And of course, you can choose to opt out of any activities while on tour. We leave that at your discretion. Motorized scooters are unfortunately not suitable for any of our escorted tours in Scandinavia. Well, because we unfortunately can't control the universe, things do tend to happen that are beyond our control. If something does happen while you're overseas and you need assistance, here are a few helpful tips. First, ask help from your tour director. From lost luggage to finding a good place to eat, your tour director is there to help ensure that your vacation is just as carefree as possible. If you happen to leave your phone behind in a hotel room, need an injury seen by a doctor, or have something stolen, your tour director can be a huge asset in getting the help that you need. Now, if you are on your own or haven't met up with your group yet, seek help directly from the source, whether it be the airlines, hotel, or car rental agency. Now, if you're lost, ask help from the locals. Most Scandinavians speak English fluently, and you'll find that most are willing to lend a hand if, asking, if asked nicely. And like they say, a smile can open many doors. If you really need assistance right away, be sure to know how to place a call while you're in Scandinavia and what the local emergency numbers are. If you look on page 31 of our Helpful Hints booklet, it lists the contact information for the different countries. Now, if your passport does go missing, know where the U.S. Embassy is located so that you can immediately start the process of getting a new one. And sometimes you just need to be adventurous. Don't let one bad thing what could be ruin what could be a great trip. Just think of the stories you can tell everyone when you get back home. So here are just a few other random tips that didn't really fit into anywhere else, but um, it's just things that I have collected from um, my own travels and travels from the other staff members here in the office and that sort of thing. So first, save your poor to toes and step over the threshold as you enter your hotel room. Many thresholds in Scandinavia are raised and you'll find yourself stumbling if you're not careful. Also, be cautious with getting out of, in and out of bathtubs in Scandinavia as they tend to be taller than the tubs that we have here in the U.S. Now, after finishing a great meal, you might find that your waiter or waitress just keeps coming back to check on you but never brings a check. So if this is happening to you, just kindly ask for the check and you'll soon be on your way because normally they won't bring the check until you ask for it. Speaking of eating out, tipping in Scandinavia is not typical as many restaurants will include a service charge in your bill. You can leave a few kroner, uh, round up to maybe the next 10 or 5, 
uh, for your waiter or waitress if they were attentive, but leaving a 20% tip is not necessary. Now while we're kind of on the topic of tipping, we do leave tipping up to your discretion on the tour um, for the guides and the bus driver. You'll find a handy guideline in your helpful hints booklet on page 23. And you can offer tips in US dollars, but local currency is usually preferable. Now have you ever arrived to your hotel room and open your suitcase and discover that your shampoo has exploded all over your clothes? If you haven't, well, I can tell you it's no fun. So I would recommend packing your shampoo, conditioner, soap, and any other liquids in a Ziploc bag and just save yourself some stress. <laughs> You may also want to bring a small bit of soap to hand wash any items that you may want to rewear while traveling. And another handy tip, and one that we cannot stress enough, is to call your bank or credit card company before you leave the U.S. to let them know where you're going, for how long, and that they can expect some charges to show up. So the last thing you want to have to worry about on your trip is how you're going to pay for things. Another handy tip is to pack a couple of days before you actually leave. This will give you a chance to hopefully catch anything that you might have missed. And finally, pack some snacks to take along with you. Uh, granola bars, trail mix, chips, etc. These are um, great ways to kind of fill, fill in the little afternoon snack craving that you might need. And then you can use this space to bring home the items that you've purchased along the way on your flight home. So these are some of the questions that we received on our um, um, a form when you filled out to, to sign up for the webinar. So I'm going to go through some of these and hopefully answer the questions that you had. And um, if not, then I will, after, um, after I go through this, I'll open it up for other questions. And so we can try and get all those answered this morning. So the first one was, how much money should I bring? And this is a really hard question to answer because it really depends on a number of factors. Uh, the length of your stay, the extent of your travels, and your shopping and sightseeing plans. Now all of our tours include your breakfast and some dinners during your trip. Lunches, however, are usually up to you. So you can expect to spend maybe five to fifteen dollars for a lunch in Norway, but really if you eat a large breakfast and maybe bring a snack with you and eat a decent dinner, you'll find that you really won't be needing lunch very often. Other expenses are usually of a personal nature such as laundry, drinks at dinner, um, tax taxis, and gratuity for the drivers and guides. I would recommend bringing up um, maybe a few dollars, um, you know, plan a few dollars each day and maybe, you know, add a little bit to that just to give yourself a little um, wiggle room. So um, that, that one is that a hard one to answer. <laughs> uh, should you exchange money or bring money before leaving the U.S.? Now, like I said, if your bank can't exchange U.S. dollars into kroner, then it may not be a bad idea for you to bring the money along. Um, I would contact your local bank first to determine if they have kroner um, or, you know, even euro if you're traveling um, maybe beyond Norway. Um, and if they don't, maybe they could acquire some. You might also want to ask if there's any fees and what the exchange of rate is. So then you can compare the exchange rate to the market value to see if you're getting a good rate of exchange. Uh, the easiest way, honestly, is just to exchange it at the airport. You may not get the best rate of exchange, but it's very easy. You can also use ATMs while in Scandinavia, and, and that's usually um, the, the fair market value of um, the exchange rate. So how will I recognize others on the tour? So after you get off your plane at your arrival city, the easiest way to spot other brekkie tour participants is to look for a brekkie tote bag or a luggage tag. So we made our tags annoyingly bright for a reason since they are easy to spot. So not only will this help you find your luggage, but it can help you locate potential friends. And of course your guide will be there outside um, in the arrivals hall with the brekkie tour sign and gathering people and um, he or she will have a checklist of the people that are expected to transfer with him or her. And so she'll make sure that um, everyone is there together before, before you leave for the hotel. Now, if you decided to book a pre-tour extension, um, the easiest place to meet your group is at the dinner um, the night the group is scheduled to arrive. So this is in, in your information packet that you received from our office in the departure letter. And usually it's 6.30 or 7 um, at the hotel. 
Now, should I bring a cap and mittens? Now, personally, I prefer the chance to be warmer than colder. So if your tour includes time on a boat, which most of them do, or if you're going up north um, into the mountains, it's certainly not a bad idea to pack uh, some warmer clothing. You can always take a layer off if you're warm, but if you're cold and you left those at home, then you're just kind of out of luck. Are the seats assigned on the motor coach? Nope, we ask that everyone on our tour actually switch seats on board the bus so that everyone kind of gets a chance to sit where they want. Now, do I need to bring my medications in the pharmacy labeled bottles? Now, currently the TSA does not require passengers to have medication in prescription bottles. However, I would recommend taking a, a copy of a picture of your prescription um, or take a copy of the prescription um, just in case you you need to refill or you need um, you know you flush the pill down the toilet or something and, and you need to get a new one so it's always not it's also not a bad idea to take a few extra just in case something like that does happen I have um, I really like these little pill minders um, these are these are great because you do kind of get your days messed up when you're traveling so so this is, uh, makes it easier to keep track of what you have taken and what you need to take. Uh, can I use my phone in Norway? So unless you have an international plan, your phone will probably not work in Norway. You can contact your carrier about an international plan, but to be honest, I've um, I've really just gone to just using my phone via the Wi-Fi, either on the bus or in the hotel. Yes, the buses have Wi-Fi in, in Scandinavia. Most of them do. So if you have a way to um, video chat back home, such as um, Skype, or if you have an iPhone, you can FaceTime. And I'm not sure what the one is for the Google phone, but I'm sure it's something similar. Um, you can actually just call home via the video chat, and um, that way you can kind of keep up with everybody. Um, you can also check into prepaid SIM cards, um, but I would recommend contacting your carrier, uh, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, whoever you have, before you depart the U.S. to make sure that your phone can be used with a SIM card. Will I be able to wash my clothes? So if you're planning to pack light and wash your clothes while traveling in Scandinavia, you may be in for a bit of a challenge. Uh, laundry mats are pretty scarce, and while some hotels do offer laundry services, it can be a little pricey. I would recommend maybe taking items that can be easily hand washed in the sink and then hung up overnight to dry, especially if you're going to be in a hotel for two nights. Um, that's a great great night to um, to do some laundry, and, um, and this helps you know your your garments kind of smelling and looking fresh. But um, otherwise, I would I would try to pack for what you need and and maybe do a little spot washing along the way. Now, how many um, uh, tour guides will we have? That was another question. Um, you will have one tour director with you during your time in Scandinavia, and you'll also have some local guys that will join you for short periods of time. So these local guides are there to provide in-depth information in the sites and areas you'll be visiting, while your tour director will provide general commentary, assist with any issues, and keep your tour entertained throughout the journey. So you may have um, what we call a step-on guide, um, say for a city tour in Oslo. So your guide will join you for your city tour, and then after the tour, they will depart. So, But your tour director is there from the beginning to end. So any tips or suggestions for souvenirs? Um, so depending on what country or area you're visiting, there are some great options for items that you can pick up to remember your time. Postcards, Christmas ornaments, linens, magnets, um, music CDs, flags, and clothing such as a Norwegian sweater. These are all kind of small, um, lightweight items that are pretty easy to pack in your suitcase for the return trip home. Now, if you have room and weight, um, you might want to add trolls, of course, um, Norway trolls, uh, Dala horses if you're visiting Sweden, Viking replica carvings, um, glassware, reindeer or other animal pelts, uh, candles, pewter and silver items are, are, are nice as well. Um, liquors are also popular, such as Aquavit um, from um, Norway, but you will need to pack those in your check luggage. If you do need things shipped home, uh, that can be arranged. I would actually ask the shop um, wherever you're purchasing your items if they can if they offer shipping to the U.S. 
And you may also ask if they have an online store that you can purchase items or have them shipped to you upon returning home. Now, speaking of souvenir shopping, what is that? That is value-added tax. So if you do an, any extensive shopping while in Scandinavia, you'll want to bring your passport along with you on your shopping trip. You'll, um, you'll look for a global blue or some sort of um, little icon that usually they put up in their windows. And, and then um, you'll get some, some documents from the retailer. When you, before you depart at the airport, you'll, um, you'll need to submit your uh, refund for your value, value added tax. So to get a refund, your purchase has to be above a certain amount. And for instance, in Norway, it's 315 kroner at a single retailer. So you can add up purchases from various shops to reach the required amount. It has to be 315 kroner at one, um, one place. And so if you're doing a lot of shopping, you'll benefit from finding one spot where you can buy big. So, but if you do have any questions about the value out of tax and how that whole refund thing works, um, I've listed the, um, the Global Blue web, uh, website here for Norway. And um, it's uh, basically you fill out a form, you have to show your items, show your passport, and your, your airline or um, tickets um, at the little Global Blue Global global blue kiosk um, at the airport before you leave. It's not, it's not difficult. It's a little time consuming depending on um, how strict they are, but it, it is worth it. So if, you, if you've done quite a bit of shopping, you can get um, about 20% of your, um, uh, you know, your value out of tax back. So, and now if you're worried that you're going to starve while you're on one of our tours, not to worry. Each morning you'll be greeted with a full Scandinavian breakfast, which usually includes a variety of breads, cereal, fruits, yogurt, meat, warm dishes such as scrambled eggs or bacon and sausage, cheese, jams, and more. And for dinner it's usually more of the same. There's several choices of meat and fish, fruits and vegetables, breads, uh, potatoes, and desserts. Now some things that you might want to try while in Scandinavia include reindeer, uh, the many different kinds of fish which are very fresh, uh, you, the yogurt, cream, and ice cream, so anything that's kind of dairy related, really good, uh, strawberries um, and other berries such as lingon and cloudberries, cheeses of course, um, if you're in Sweden, of course try the meatballs, um, have some Norwegian waffles, and of course the breads, oh my goodness, the breads there are delicious. So, and if you wanna try some regional drinks, you might wanna check out the different beers that are produced locally, uh, Aquavik, mixed drinks, and wines. Now, if you're planning on flying with a CPAP machine, the make and model number must be submitted to the airlines at least 72 hours prior to your departure. So if you are planning to, to use your CPAP machine or want to be sure that you can bring it on board, just send us a quick email with that make a model number. We'll run it by the airlines, make sure that everything is okay, and let you know that it is good to bring on board. All right, and so now you know. So now I'm going to open it up to questions that you may have. So let's see here. Uh, Okay, uh, Rebecca, you had asked, is there a recommended reading list? Actually, I do have a list of books that I can send to you um, if you would be interested in that. So I will send that to you after the call today. Uh, oh, do you need to bring any special shoes to walk on the ice? Usually, if you are doing a glacier walk, um, I think you're going to Iceland, maybe? Um, they will give you the um, crampons to, to put on your shoes. So that's, that's usually not a problem. Uh, you do not need to bring toilet paper along. John, they do have um, uh, toilet paper there, so not a problem. And are there pay toilets? You know, I don't know that I've seen pay toilets in Norway. I have seen them in Iceland, but not in Norway or in other um, places, um, you know, in Scandinavia. But there's always a chance of that. Usually we, we try to stop at places where... Um, you can use more than just the toilet, so if you want to grab something to drink and, and use the toilet, something like that, then it's usually not a problem. Um, is the luggage handled by the tour personnel or do we have to do that ourselves? So 
on the, um, if you're traveling on an escorted tour, we do provide luggage handling at the hotels for one bag. So it's usually your larger bag. And so what happens is usually the bus driver will unload it off of the bus. The hotel staff will collect it and then bring it to your room. And then when you um, check out the next day, you will set it outside your door and then they will come and collect it, take it back down to the bus, the bus driver will load it, that sort of thing. Um, John, I will need to get back to you probably on the, the Hertzgruten cruise. Um, I can look that information up for you just to be, be sure that, because um, they have several different pricing tiers now. So um, I, will, I will double check on that for you. Uh, Susan, you asked, does Iceland Air offer blankets on the plane? Yes, they do, but they are at a cost now. So if that's something that you definitely want, you might want to bring your own. Um, I know I have a, it's a travel blanket that folds up into a pillow, so it kind of serves um, dual, dual um, roles there. And uh, <laughs> uh, you also asked about the kroner price tags, yes. So the comma is basically um, what a period would be for us. Um, so if it's uh, 495 comma zero zero kroner, that's 495 kroner. Um, usually they use a period in the place of what we would use a comma. So it's opposite of how we use it. I know it's a little confusing. So, um, but, uh, so if it's 5,000 kroner, it would be five period zero zero zero. So oh, I hope that makes sense. I know that it, it's opposite of what, how we do it. So, um, Perry, you had asked about tips for drivers and tour guides. Um, we do leave that up to you. And we do have a um, recommendation listed in our helpful hints. But like I said, it's really, it's, it's totally up to you. I think for the guides, we do five to eight dollars a day. And I think for the bus driver, it's three to five, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. And let's see. Room for more to go on this trip. Um, Robin, I will have to check back on that. Um, you had asked if there was any more rooms. Um, well, it, we do have some space still available some, for some of our tours that are, you know, haven't yet departed. Um, airfare, of course, though, is a little tricky since um, we may not have group space available on um, for the airlines anymore. But we can look at other um, flights and other carriers, and we can get you there. And then, um, so as long as we have the space on the bus, we will work to get you on board the, the tour. And um, all right, do we have any other questions? Um, we still have a few more minutes, so I'm happy to stick around and answer anything that might come up. While we wait for any other questions, I'll um, there we go. So there is our contact information in case you have um, any questions that I didn't answer for you today. Um, I will get back to those that maybe have some specific questions. Um, I do ha I do get a copy of all the questions that are sent in. Um, via the call today. So not a problem if I accidentally skipped you or something, I apologize. Um, oh, John, you had asked if all the pillows are pillows are feather bedding and that sort of thing. Not usually. Um, if you do need a, um, you know, a, some, I mean, it depends. It's kind of here, you know, it's kind of like it is here that sometimes we do have um, um, feather, feather pillows. And, um, but if you do need something like um, an anti-allergen pillow, then that's something that can be requested. So, um, Jean, you had asked about um, extra health insurance. Now, we do offer travel insurance, which does include some um, medical insurance as well. If that's something that you might be interested in, I can send that over to you, and um, that might help. So, uh, and Brian, you had asked about as a U.S. driver's license adequate for driving in Norway, and yes, it is. So that's not a problem at all. 
and okay, John, I will I will check on that for you, um, and and get back to you on that. So I know I need to get back to you on the the deal with the hurt. Hurtigruten anyway, so I will, um, like I said, I get a copy of all these questions, so I'll make sure and try and answer them all at one time. And and yes, Rebecca, I will send you the travel insurance information. Okay, all right, John, that's not a problem. I will get that to you. Uh, it should be later today, actually, so um, that's not a problem at all. So let me see if I've missed any questions. Um, okay, uh, weather in Norway in July. So um, let me go back to that page. I can find it. Oh, here we go. So in July in Norway, you're probably looking at, you know, high 50s, lower 60s, depending on uh, what region you're in. Now it can be rainy, so uh, especially uh, Bergen is famous for all of its rain, so it's definitely a good idea to bring, um, bring some sort of umbrella, rain poncho, something like that. And I will check and see if there's anyone still needing or wanting to share a room. Um, on the song Vols tour, so I will I will check on that. So um, let's see. Let me go back down here to our contact page. So all right, Kroners. Yes, uh, Daryl, you can use. Well, um, if you have a credit card, um, you can use um, you know an ATM to to get Kroner once you arrive in Norway. And so I you know. As long as I know my debit card has a little chip in it, so as long as you have a chip, then you should be um, good. Uh, Jean, you're asking when our tickets and flight information. You should, um, depending on what tour that you're on, you should get them about two to three weeks before you depart. So um, I'm not sure what tour you're on, but um, I can check and see and maybe kind of give you an idea of when you might expect those. So if you haven't gotten them already. All right. We have any other questions? Well, I do want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Um, I know a lot of you had expressed interest in, of course, seeing Norway and seeing the beautiful countryside and connecting with um, family heritage sites and that sort of thing. So we are really looking forward to showing you the beauty and some of the cultural aspects of Norway and Scandinavia. And we hope that you all have a wonderful trip with us. And we look forward to seeing you in Scandinavia this summer. And for some of you, it will be sooner than others. But um, if there's any questions that I can help with in the meantime, uh, please, please feel free to give us a call. You can send us an email. And um, I'll put my um, contact information back up here. So there's me. So you can, um, you can send me an email. You can give us a call. We will be glad to help you. I will be reaching out to some of you later on today um, with answers to those questions that I maybe didn't um, cover in detail or just want to, you know, make sure that you um, got the information that you need. So, so if you are receiving an email from me or from one of my coworkers, you'll know why. And I wish all of you a wonderful day. Hopefully we will have great weather during your time in Scandinavia. We will um, send up prayers to the weather gods for you all. And um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and we will be talking to you soon. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good afternoon.